How's it going? Yes, that's working. Going good. How are you? Um, was over at the Outsiders House Museum last week. Uh huh. That's a. They did a good job with that place. Yes, it's amazing. And I know he had. A, there's a lot to tackle. <laughs> I'm sure. When everybody yeah. first came, but um, it was pretty much uh, a building being demolished when he got it. You know. Yes. Yeah. That's amazing. And that together and uh they they put it all they sort of recreated what we had when we were kids it doesn't feel that long ago does it you know part of me still feels 14 and part of me feels 110 you know right uh, but um it's incredible how uh relevant the book and the film still is today that that that's yes. always me and you know, it's required reading in so many schools across America. And every year I get a new batch of uh, 13, 14 year old little girls crying that Johnny's dead. And they find out Pony Boy's 57 and they really start crying. Yeah, they can't believe it. Well, it, it resonates with that time of your life. I mean, it's just. Yeah, yeah. It's, such a, such a, it's such a vulnerable um, uh, period. I remember when I was 13, 14, 15 in. Uh, those were probably the, you know, the most formidable, but also the most difficult times of my life. You know, it was it was a very tough time, you know, really having no clue who I was and and really wanting to be liked and and, you know, one of the cool kids. And yes. I, I think uh, when you're that age, you worry a lot about what other people think, you know, and, uh, and yes. there's not a lot of people that have the fortitude and the self-discipline like an S.E. Hinton at 17 and, you know, sit down and write it. Yeah, it's, it's very hard at that stage of life. I mean, you're just trying to figure out who am I and where do I belong and people exactly. worry about what somebody's wearing and you're not wearing that. Is that not cool? Are you going to yeah. fit in? It's a very awkward stage and it's stressful. No yeah. question. And I think that's why the book is so effective. You know, the, uh, the, there, there's a character for everybody, no matter what side of the tracks you're from. And, you know, whether you're relate to Dally or Pony Boy or Johnny or Cherry, that that's what I think keeps it going still today. Yeah. It's like, you've got that whole spectrum of people that, it yeah. resonates with. I mean, you can feel the emotions and <laughs> you guys did a wonderful job. And, you know, I'm sure going through those stages and being there filming, does it take you back whenever you walk in the doors over there <laughs> now? Or? A lot of beautiful memories. A lot, a lot of, you know, it was a different time back then. There was a, there was an innocence that doesn't yeah. exist today. You know, I mean, the kids, um, when, when I was a child, there was something whimsical about life. We were, we, you know, we had to search for answers today. You know, every kid knows everything because they've got this thing in their pocket called the phone and they've mm -hmm. got the answer to every single thing. So um, we were much more connected as a society. Um, right. Education was a big part of life. We sat and looked at each other and we spoke, you know, kids today don't do right. that. Kids ask each other out to the prom via text. And right. uh, okay if you say no because i can erase it and it never happened but mm -hmm. i remember you know you had to muster up the courage and go look somebody in the face and accept a yes or a no and um, exactly um, it was character building and and today you know kids don't even get dirty and i was yeah. dirty head to toe every single day and as long as i was as, as long as i stayed within the range of my mother or father yelling at me to come home um, nobody, nobody, uh, worried or cared about what anybody was doing today. You know, parents can't even let their kids go out the front door. Right. It's a whole different world. Yeah. We grew up. <laughs> it's crazy how things have changed in the communication. Like you say, with the text, it's just, they don't know how to respond. If somebody calls them on the phone, they're like, Oh no. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, people hate to even speak on the phone. You know, it's almost like, uh, 
somebody knocking on your door today. I remember when I was a kid, somebody knocked on the door and it was like, oh, we have company. You know, today yeah. somebody knocks on your door and you think, holy crap, who is that? Run and, and hide. <laughs> that's a phone call. You know, the kids much rather text. You know, I can. Um, and even today, I, I have friends that I can text and they reply right away. I can call and they don't pick up the phone. And it's a strange thing. My mother and father tend to say that. They, they say I don't pick up the phone that often, um, but I'll reply on a text. You know, uh, I, I I prefer talking on the phone. I think uh, text can be uh, misunderstood and, and taken the wrong way. And um, subtext and tone are misunderstood with type. Yes. And, um, you know, it's, a, it's just a different world. So yes. kids ask me all the time about, uh, it, you know, were those real cigarettes you were smoking? And, you know, that was terrible. Why Why would they make right. you do that? And, you know, ignorance mm -hmm. is, but just even as an actor, you know, I didn't, I didn't weigh heavy into the fact whether it was good or bad for myself. I, I it was just part of the deal, you know, and today I think we're so programmed to, um, everybody's done the thinking for us. So nobody... Right. Nobody has the capability of critical thinking anymore. Everybody just sort of does what everybody else says, you know, like. Yeah, it's like, oh, okay, let's follow suit. You know, we got to. Everybody just got in line to get the vax. Nobody stopped for a second to think, maybe, maybe that's not so great. And um, right. whether you believe in it or you don't, that's not the point. The point is, did you stop to think for yourself or did you just do what somebody said? Just do exactly. Kind of. The difference, you know, the critical thinking back then for us was imperative. You know, we didn't have survival. The, <laughs> yeah, we didn't have all the answers uh, in our pocket, and and yeah. um, there was something uh, beautiful about that. You know, so, so relying upon yourself. You know, right. um, just the phone you calls. You know, know. <laughs> have you know, we didn't have all these labeled diseases. You know. Uh, uh, ADD was cured around my house with a swift boot to the ass, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and today, uh, it's 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 a very different world. It's a different planet, and uh, and we had clean food and clean air and clean water and and right. um, drink out of the was, water hose and play in the yeah, backyard and yeah, run down, climb a tree, climb a tree you know? dirty, you know. And today. Uh, you know, we, I think kids really miss out. There's a lot of video games, a lot of programming, a lot of, you know, I didn't get enough likes of the picture that I posted. Right. And, um, it, it's just it's a different, a different, it's a different, yeah, yeah. And there's a false sense of, um, uh, I think security and bravery, kids really are terrible to each other online and they'll say horrible things, you know, and, yes. and I often things even on my threads um, where I, I'm surprised because I, and I, I suppose we're all guilty of it at some point, but I would never say the things that people say in I'm person. so emboldened by that keyboard or that, you know, it's just oh. so, what are you doing? What? It's like, uh, just be good humans, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and to the point to where, you know, even if you do reply, if somebody says something to me a couple of weeks back um, and I replied to them something like, you know, don't you have anything better to do other than being negative and trolling people on right. social media? And then the person made a video of themselves so proud that C. Thomas Howell replied to them. Oh. And I, <laughs> was like what like the message yeah, this was a lot of positive that. thing yeah it, it was like it was so frustrating to me because i i, I don't they think of myself point. as a celebrity i i but at times i think of myself as an example and you know i do tend to uh reach out to people on social media if they reach out to me and most celebrities or actors don't do that but yes, I think take much to put a smile on somebody's face and right. when there's somebody negative um instead of being negative back i might say you know why take the time to be negative you you can be positive yeah. all and, that effort <laughs> and it make you feel better and you know the whole point is missed when 
when you're dealing with that and it and it's so reflective um when you really start to think about it the the kind of people we've created in the society we're living in today is so different than you know in the late 60s when when these kids were running around i mean i remember uh i thought it was such a great moment when they're about to rumble and and they say yeah we're, we're going to be there but no knives or chains you know yeah. was, okay let's let's fight it out a little bit and go home and get an ice bag not and get I, overboard <laughs> yeah nobody's nobody's yeah. bringing guns and nobody's bringing you know like it even even the worst thing in the world which was a neighborhood rumble um yeah was tempered you know and there's none uh -huh. of that they knew there were limits, you know, you kind of go to this point and you don't go farther than that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And there's no, that, that doesn't exist anymore. There's no tempered behavior anymore. You know, it's just like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. um, the dark side is so extremely dark and, and there was an, a ceiling to it at one point, at least when I was a kid, yeah. we would never say the things that kids say to each other and do the oh, thing. Yeah to each other and i get a lot of kids that really suffer and they really you know the the, the abuse is out there and um oh, yes. it, it's a it's a, hard, it's a hard time i think mm -hmm. um for for kids to coexist uh, uh, during this time and i think the outsiders first of all i can't tell you the countless stay gold tattoos that i've seen it's been at least oh, a million um it has but such an impact the people that connect to that story and that film and the film lives in perpetuity. So does the book. I mean, the book was written over 50 years ago. The film was made 40 years ago. And um, there's a, there's something beautiful about the, um, the weight that, that, that piece carries with both young kids and adults. I get, I get so many, mothers and fathers reaching out to me going, Oh my God, my son is now reading this book in school. And that, you know, I get to go through it again yeah. and I watched the film with them the other night. And it was such an amazing experience. And just the fact that the torch continues to be passed along is, mm -hmm. is amazing because, you know, when we made the movie, it came out and, you know, it was a moderate success. It made a little bit of money, but it wasn't this sort of piece of Americana pop culture it's iconic today right. um in a, in a weird way and it's um to the point to where like you know none of us expected that of course we we had the feeling that we were creating something special working with francis i mean francis ford coppola was special yeah. so he made it special and i'm not talking about his prior um awards or accolades uh, I didn't even know what The Godfather was. I'd never seen Apocalypse Now. I've, I'd never even heard of Francis Ford Coppola. And, you know, I'd yeah. done E.T. I, I had the same, you know, when I was 13. I really had no idea who Steven Spielberg was. And um, I just wanted to be a rodeo cowboy. I, I was raised a cowboy right. by cowboys. So my whole intention from the beginning was gather up some money to go get a better horse, you know, I... I planned on right. being being a professional team roper and rodeoing for a living. And um, the roles just never went away, you know, and I continued to work. So it was such a, uh, I think, um, breath of fresh air for people like Francis and in Steven Spielberg during E.T. to um, be around people who treated them um like normal human beings because I wasn't aware of the yeah. credits or the, you know, yeah. It's probably very people. refreshing to not have that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think you know. people, uh, a couple of people that were in the cast of the outsiders were, were aware of what, you know, Emilio's father had done apocalypse now. So Emilio had gone over okay. to the Philippines and, and uh, spent time with Francis to some degree when he was a young boy, he was probably 10 or 12 years old. Um, but he still understood the value that Francis was bringing to his life, which I had no connection to at that time. And, you know, I was with Susie Hinton every day on the set and Francis um, as as mentors and teachers and leaders 
Um, but again, there was an innocence there that I think was, as you said, refreshing and um, led to a really pure experience for us all. And um, I didn't want anything from them. You know, I, I, I wasn't uh, hoping to become a star or, or, you know, needing money or anything like that. And, and I think that comes out in the performance when I look back at it and you see this living young, in the moment and enjoying every moment as you, it came. Being very present and living in the moment. And um, that's what made the movie work. I think so. I mean, and I think that's what people love about you is your authenticity and just your genuine care. And, you know, it comes across just in the things that you do. And well, I appreciate it. And I think for me, you know, connecting with people has always been uh, uh, an exchange that I've appreciated, you know, um, whether it's a meet and greet and I'm able to hug it out with somebody and take a picture. I'm yeah. not wishing I was somewhere else or, or um, right. upset at, you know, uh, that my station in life isn't bigger and better than what it is or any of that. I, I, I'm really content and proud of the work that I've done and that I continue to do. And um, I, I wouldn't trade my life with Tom Cruise in, in a second, you know, and I'm so proud of, of what everybody has done. And, and the guys yeah. that came outsiders all had great success. And I mean, look what Diane Lane yeah. has done. And, what an amazing you know, little group that just expanded and exploded everywhere. <laughs> Exactly. Everybody it all had... started right there in Tulsa. A lot of it, you know, the connection, no, and then just no question. And I and I and I think uh, um, it's a beautiful uh, quilt work, and I'm really proud of my little patch uh, mm -hmm. uh, on the quilt. And um, you know, I think people ask me all the time, you know, do you stay in touch with blah blah blah? And do, you know, of course, when we cross paths, we hug it out, uh, you know, but everybody yeah. went on to be so busy all the time. And um, yeah. people say, oh, you should have a, a, you know, a reunion and get everybody together. And my reply to that is good luck getting everybody in the same state at one time. No sense right. in the city, you know, it, it's it would be impossible. But, um, yeah. you know, that's where that's where it really all started. And I'll, I'll never forget the day. Uh, I was doing reshoots and for the most part, everybody had gone home. Ralph and I were doing some pickups while they were shooting rumble fish. And I got a phone call from Tom Cruise in my hotel and he was just completely blown away over this experience that he just had in the movie theater. And he said, I had to call you. Have you seen your film ET? And I said, no, I haven't seen it yet. He says, it's an amazing movie. I, I cried. It's one of my favorite movies that I've ever seen. You should be so proud. And I'll never forget yeah. when we were shooting The Outsiders, somebody said, have you done anything before? And I said, E.T. And they started laughing. They were like, oh, okay, a Martian movie. Good for you. Yeah. And it wasn't, but a couple months later, you know, E.T. was this this giant success. And, and Cruz went through the same thing. Uh, I remember when he got the call and he had to leave Tulsa for a weekend to go uh, audition or do some kind of a film test for uh, Risky Business. And he came back and he said, I, I got this great part. I'm going to go do this movie, Risky Business. And I'm so excited to go do it. And we were like, oh, OK. And, uh, you know, a few months later, everybody's wearing Ray-Bans and socks and sliding through the kitchen singing. Yeah. Bob's and uh um, right. It blew up you know it was a it was an amazing time it's one of those things you never know where it's going to lead and it's amazing a journey i'm sure <laughs> yes so are there any super memorable moments on the set that really stand out or you know i think there's there's many you know i think uh um the you know francis was more of a psychologist than he was a director he wasn't as interested in telling somebody what to do and having them do exactly what he told them as he was uh, planting seeds along the way and letting us make those discoveries ourselves and allowing us to think that we made those choices when it was him all along. You know, he's the, he was the, he's like, he was like yeah. the cause, you know, we, we, uh, uh, 
we're really naive with the, it, as far as the process. And I think we were all just living those roles. You know, it was a, um, you had a, a way of bringing it out of you, huh? <laughs> Bring out that moment and that passion for that character that you were playing. Yeah. And, you know, um, th they would create these real competitive um, experiences on the weekends and they would have, you know, barbecues and, and they would have pick up football games or basketball games between the socias and the greasers. And, and yeah. <laughs> we actually shot the entire movie on videotape. Uh, which mm -hmm. they edited and screened for us before we ever rolled any footage. And um, that did two things. First of all, it created a, an incredible rehearsal process, but yeah. it, it, it formed a bond between these, these young boys um, that um, is inexplicable really, because I've never gone through it since. And, and I have never gone through it before, but, most of the time today, this is the this is the other side of the spectrum. Um, they're so concerned about saving money that the first thing that's cut out is any rehearsal time. Nobody's going to pay for a hotel room or per diem or, you know, a week yeah. of trying to rehearse when, you know, uh, they don't have to. So a lot of times you're meeting your your coworkers for the very first time, five minutes before you're rolling film. Imagine doing a love. Yeah. I don't have to do yeah, those. Yeah, that's anymore. hard to get that chemistry and the, you know, get into yeah. character whenever you're first. <laughs> so we we actually had um, a very different experience. We knew each other extremely well by the time we started. So um, during the rumble or, uh, you know, uh, the church scene burning down, Ralph and I cared about each other tremendously so when his character was injured it really affected me personally because ralph was being removed from the filming process I and mean, we didn't film it completely in order but by the time we did that church scene uh and and we went to see johnny in the hospital burnt up he was done and we still had a quarter of the movie left to shoot so yeah. there was heaviness that went with that because we cared about each other so much you know, um, Ralph was so close to his family that on Easter they came out to visit. And um, even though Ralph was 21 at the time, his parents were adamant that we had an Easter egg hunt. So they they planted, uh, you know, things for us to hunt for, including, you know, yeah. cash money. And and uh, I was a part of that with Ralph. And, and I, I loved that moment because, you know, here I was 14 or 15. Ralph was, you know, 20, 21. And we were still living in this innocent time where family really uh yeah. cared about tradition and um right. flew from new york to to experience this with us and it meant a lot to me and and that was because of the time that i had spent with ralph mm -hmm. became your family <laughs> do you still exactly yes any of the trouble that we got into was so innocent anyway you know I, yeah I, it wouldn't have been have anything trouble. compared to what people could get into trouble to today, right? <laughs> yeah. And like, I think I had my first beer on the set of The Outsiders when I was 15. Yeah. That was like a big deal. But um, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of a uh, chair sinking a little bit. It's kind of a funny uh, thing. It, it, it was um, here we had like six, seven, eight young guys all hanging out together. Um living their dream you know yeah. good times i'm sure <laughs> super, cool. super cool yeah but um you know there's there's been some i feel, I feel very lucky and and uh blessed and we're still going you know i i've got a series on netflix right now called obliterated and okay. when it came out it was number one in the world for about three or four weeks and nice. um top 10 in the United States for a couple months. And, you know, it just, it's just uh, things like that, that you don't really anticipate. And, you know, I, I, I go into every project um, without any expectations, mainly because expectations are rarely met, you know, but um, I do my best on whatever it is I'm working on. And I, I hope for the best, you know, and it seems to land there and you 
made the excellent choices, I would say. And I know the road, I'm sure, hasn't been easy through the process. There's yeah, time. Definitely ups, and downs, definitely ups and downs in life, you know, but yeah. um, I, I think for the most part, um, I, I think the statistics of, of uh, child actors having, you know, a lifelong career are pretty, pretty low number, you know? Yeah. Um, so, you know, it wasn't like I, I went to school to study acting and then, you know, finally made it after I graduated and became something. And I was, I was working at the age of 10 years old, you know, and um, um, I'm 57. So, you know, I have almost 50 years in the business and um, it's been good to me. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. And you guys have a great evening. Bye now. Bye. Take care.